Hi folks, building a DIY repeat o meter card here to the previous video on this. This is a similar version that we're sort of doing our own interpretation of. We had modeled up the first version, sent that over to Tom Lipton, asked for his feedback, and we got some awesome improvements. Card to Tom's video here, walking through some design changes that not only improve the functionality, but also the aesthetic and the, and the way we're gonna make this part. And we went through, I actually started from scratch. Sometimes it's just easier. This part has all fairly simple CAD things to it. There's nothing really complicated. And I wanted that clean slate and we really took our time and did a thorough job on each individual Fusion 360 component. And on the cam, you'll see more of the cam when we go through some of the machining videos to come. Uh, but really labeling everything and doing a thorough job uh, to make this hopefully something that you guys can follow along and enjoy. So if you're new to Fusion 360, uh, I just used the word component. These are all components along the left here. What is a component? One definition is it's a discrete object in the real world. Fancy way of saying it's something that's on its own. So if it's an individual part, it's a component. This thumb screw, if I click on it once, See how we get the little dotted lines underneath it? That tells me which component it is. I could right click and I'll choose isolate. So this is actually two components, but they're fixed together permanently by McMaster car or by the manufacturer. So it's actually one component for all intents and purposes here. I'm done with that. So I'll right click and choose unisolate. So the important design changes, the feet, we're going to use ball bearings. Super excited, it's an easy McMaster car component that we can purchase, inexpensive, and we've got the Okamoto grinder working now, card here to that video. So we'll be able to use the grinder to flat spot those after we press them in place. I went ahead and added, I'll isolate this component to show you guys, four holes above each of the ball bearings. That way if we don't like them or something goes wrong or we wanna change them, we should be able to press or push them out. The flex shirt itself now, instead of being a bandsaw cut angle, Robin Renzetti was mentioning there's no need to do it as an angle. So it's a straight cut, that'll be easy. More important, we've drilled and then reamed a 3 8 inch hole here that avoids having the stress riser of a sharp corner, especially one that's only say 50 thousandths of an inch off the end. Avoids having to use a slitting saw, which I don't know anybody who gets excited about using slitting saws and their machine and that drilled hole is pretty easy to accurately locate. So now my bandsaw cut is really a clearance cut into that hole. I don't need to worry about the bandsaw creating this last flexure width, which should have a big influence. You know, the thickness of that flexure will affect how easily uh, this end moves here where it rests on the ball bearing pad. Great, great uh, ad from Tom using a brass insert. We can make these with different diameters to hold different indicators. I really like that, especially since I've got a couple different indicators myself that I wanted to use. The best improvement, definitely the functionality of this flex shirt. The factory repeater meters, as well as my original plan, was very, un, uh, very unimaginative and kind of hacky, which was literally a bandsaw cut along that edge. That's what creates the ability to have a spreader bar here. I think we, uh, I think there was a differential screw that works to adjust these, and that adjusts the preload on the indicator between uh, this bar, its location, and the screw. The screw being the thing that sort of reads variation in the floor of what you're measuring. Tom's idea was like anything. <laughs> Once you hear about it, you, you you get mad at yourself for not thinking about it. Reminds me of the video we just did with Jay Pearson on creating quality control worksheets. Some of those improvements were so good and so obvious that uh, again, it's embarrassing. Make this out of two pieces. I'll isolate the top bar. So this is a pretty easy part to machine. We've got a little shelf here, and then we'll add to it the bottom bar. This one is 0.4 inches. This one is 0.3 inches. So that should make this be you know, subservient to this, or as we adjust it, this should flex, which is what I want. That should stay stiff. And then this massively simplifies how the mechanism works. This is a quarter 28 thumb screw. 
and I've got a nylock nut. I may want to tweak that or somehow permanently attach it in place, but you'll gently squeeze it up such that it forms a sandwich uh, right in here. So turning this freely won't do anything, but as we thread it into the bottom bar here, and this could be a little bit longer, sorry, it should be about that long as shown, it's got a, it's collared, it's got a top and a bottom. So as I thread it in here, it's gonna either push or pull the spreader bar apart. And you'll notice I switched into wireframe view. If you don't have this little plug in here, go to Google, type in Fusion 360 Visual Styles, download this, it's an awesome uh, free app or plugin for Fusion 360 that lets me quickly switch between my two favorite views, visible, shaded with visible and wireframe to see, this was super important for this model. Take for example, uh, this area right here in the center where I've got some flathead cap screws coming up. I wanted to make sure I didn't get too close to drilling through the top. I've got a quarter 20 screw here. That's just gonna be for a handle. And then we've got the dowel pin from the side and we've got the shoulder bolt coming through the center. Speaking of shoulder bolts, my idea, which it might be overkill, was, so by the way, if you ever get confused as to what you isolated and you wanna just bring everything back, I'll right click, show all components. Great, you'll notice a few things came up. These are fixtures. This is one thing I love about Fusion 360 is we can have fixtures right in our, for cam, right in our file. So here's my shoulder bolt. Go back to wire, I call it section view, it's wireframe view. My idea was having a shoulder bolt through here means we can disassemble and reassemble this and have the edges made up and have it look really nice, have a good clean fit. And there's a little bit of even shoulder bolt diameter in this top piece and then we'll have the threaded section. Again, making sure we didn't get too close to the top. I added the Saunders Machine Works and Ox Tools logo in here. Funny enough, I think we're actually gonna remove those. I've got an even cooler idea, thanks to Ed, our new uh, Arduino intern here, who's been doing some pretty cool stuff, so stick around for that. And finally, just made sure to have a nice aesthetic look to it, rounding off the edges so we don't have sharp corners, and we reduced the overall width to about 10 inches, which is gonna fit well for how we're going to package and store this thing up, so stay tuned. I can't remember whether Tom mentioned that or not, but it was his idea, and I, and I love it, so that's another little surprise that's coming. The 28-pitch uh, thumb screw, it might be a little bit too coarse for our sort of rough adjustment to adjust the preload, so, if that is, we'll have to fix it. That's one of the things I like about this design is it's relatively modular. If I wanna change up just one thing, uh, should be able to do that. In Tom's video, he did a really cool demonstration of a differential screw where combining, I believe it was a 28 and 32 pitch screw with a formula shows the effective pitch of like 270 uh, threads per inch, which is just amazing for having really good uh, adjustment. Now you have limited range, but it gives you that resolution or, uh, or adjustment feel that you would want with something like this. I also don't love how tall this sticks up, so we might change it up. We'll see. Uh, to some extent, you've got to just start building. I find that sometimes in life, if you sit here and keep making improvements, you'll never actually get anything done. So really happy with all that. Again, thank you to Tom for his input. I feel much better, much more confident about this. We've actually already started machining it. So look forward, I think probably in the next week or two, we'll have some videos coming out on making this. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Again, link in the video description to download the CAD model here for the folks that support NYC CNC on Patreon. Otherwise, take care, folks. See you soon.